University of Wisconsin Madison Intramural Sports Captain's Video. The Competitive Sports Office is located in the back of the Natatorium, 2000 Observatory Drive, room 1025. During the academic year, the office will be open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Email us at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu. For weather questions, call the weather hotline 608-262-4756. New this year, the Intramural Sports Pass. Effective Fall 2016, members who wish to participate in intramural sports will need to purchase the intramural sports pass. This process will eliminate the overall team fee. Members will have the following pass options. A year pass for the fall, spring, and summer, a semester pass, an IM team pass, and a summer pass. Captains will still be responsible for default fees and administrative duties. Here are some of the intramural pass options. You can purchase the year pass for $45. The students can purchase a year pass at the beginning of the fall semester through Thanksgiving. This pass allows students all access to intramural sports activities, events, and programs for the fall, spring, and summer semesters. Students can register a team in as many sports as they would like to play each semester. You could also purchase a semester pass, which is for $20 to $5. Students can purchase a semester pass at the beginning of each semester. This is ideal for students that will graduate at the end of the fall semester or for students studying abroad one semester. Students can register a team in as many sports as they would like to play in the semester. The pass is purchased. Note, with either pass, participants may only participate on one single gender team and one co-rec team per sport. Students can also purchase an IM team pass, which can be purchased for $15. Students can purchase an IM team pass for each team they would like to compete in per semester. This pass is ideal for students only interested in playing on a single team per semester. Students that purchase a team pass can upgrade to a semester pass or year pass at any point. Students that wish to play on multiple teams in one sport are encouraged to purchase the semester pass. You can also buy the summer pass for $5. Students enrolled in the summer classes can, can participate in all intramural sports activities for $5. Students not enrolled in summer classes, graduating or returning students, must first purchase a rec sports summer membership in order to become eligible for the summer intramural sports pass. Once purchased, students can purchase the summer pass. Purchasing a pass. All passes can be purchased through IM Leagues. Captains are not able to create a team without purchasing their individual pass and successfully passing the captain's quiz. Participants will not be able to join a team without purchasing their individual pass. All teams will be placed on the waiting list in their respective league until the minimum number of required players to participate is met. The minimum player requirement can be found in the IM Handbook located in the Handbook section of IM Leagues. Refunds Team pass refunds will only be given if the league does not have enough space for the team or competitive sports is unable to facilitate participation for the team. If a student is unable to participate in over half of the season of the sport in which they purchased the team pass due to injury or other extenuating circumstances, they can email the competitive sports office for a refund request. Semester and year passes will only be refunded under extenuating circumstances. The IM Council will hear all requests for refunds for the semester and year pass. Also new this year, Division Structure Divisions within sports leagues will no longer be designated by competitive and recreational. They are now designated as A, B, and C. Division Definitions The A division is intended for those teams that have had some experience with organized play in that sport. This league is designed for teams whose primary objective is to win games. Players in this league generally have played in high school varsity sports and remain active in that sport. Their intramural sports teams may even hold practices. Practice is not mandatory to compete in this division. The B division is designed for teams whose primary objective is to enjoy intramural sports and to have fun. Winning is secondary. Most players on these teams have not played at the varsity level and may be slightly active in the sport. Most teams that have never played together before or are first-time participants are better suited to play in the recreational league. The C division is designed for teams whose primary objective is to enjoy intramural sports and to have fun, and com competition is not a factor. Players are interested in the social aspect of sport, teamwork, and camaraderie. Teams in the C division will not enter a playoff bracket and will not play for an intramural championship t-shirt. Instead, they will receive two additional regular season games in the spirit of recreation and activity. Teams can expect 
six games for the season. Even more new stuff, athletic training services. Athletic training services. All students have access to AT services through UHS funded by segregated fees. Students that experience any injury can book an appointment online or utilize drop-in hours to see an athletic trainer free of charge. Visit uhs.wisc.edu to book an appointment or to find drop-in clinic hours to be seen. Any player that has experienced a head injury should be removed from play and is encouraged to visit UHS for examination. And the final new thing, I swear, is the Intramural Sports Council. New this year is the Intramural Sports Council. Be a part of the council and make your voice heard. Make recommendations on the following items. The addition and removal of intramural sports. The addition and removal of sport rules. Review the Campus Cup structure and procedures. Review appeals for refunds of intramural sport passes. Review submissions for the Walter A. Wittich Family Fund Scholarship. Individuals interested in applying for the Intramural Sports Council should apply at the following link. General information for 2016 and 2017. Participation. All participants must purchase some form of the intramural pass to participate in intramural sports. Participants may only compete in one single gender team and one co-rec team when offered. Participants are not allowed to play on two single gender teams or two co-rec teams. Captains are responsible for ensuring the accuracy of their team's roster before playoffs begin. Rosters may be viewed at any time on IM Leagues. Players may be added to the roster at any time online at IM Leagues or at the game site, provided they are eligible and meet all of the requirements. Any team that uses an ineligible player during the regular season will forfeit that game. Any team that uses an ineligible player during the playoffs will forfeit the game and be immediately dropped from further competition. Eligibility. In order to participate in intramural sports, all fee-paying students are eligible to participate. Faculty and staff must have a valid rec sports membership. All participants must activate their account on IM Leagues prior to play. Defaults. If less than the minimum number of required players of a team have checked in with the supervisor at the scheduled location within 10 minutes of the scheduled time of the contest, the supervisor will declare the contest a default. A default carries a $25 fee which can be paid online using your IM Leagues account. Teams wishing to cancel a game must have their captain or co-captain email the intramural sports staff at imsports at recsports.wist.edu by 12 p.m. the day of the contest with their name, their team name, the league of play, and their intent to cancel. Once a cancellation has been granted, the request cannot be overturned. Cancellations made after 12 p.m. the day of the contest will result in the team captain being charged the $25 default fee. Phone cancellations and defaults are not accepted. Weather. In case of inclement weather, call the Rec Sports hotline at 262-4756, extension 4, for cancellation information. All efforts will be made to announce cancellations by 3 p.m. on weekdays. Regular season games are only rescheduled in extreme circumstances. Playoff games canceled due to inclement weather will be rescheduled and most likely pushed to the following day, subsequently pushing all other games in that bracket back a day. Please check IM Leagues for scheduled revisions. ID Policy All participants must have a valid UW ID card or Rec Sports membership card that swipes into Fusion. If a participant forgets their UW ID card, they can still gain access by using a courtesy pass, as long as they have another valid photo ID or have a picture in Fusion. Valid photo IDs include a photo in their Fusion profile, a driver's license, a passport, or any government-issued photo ID. Courtesy passes may be issued up to six times per semester for participants. This includes entries into facilities. Numbers are reset at the beginning of every semester. Playoff eligibility. Teams participating in the A or B League that have achieved a 4.0 or higher sportsmanship rating, less than two of any combination of defaults, forfeits, or cancellations, and achieve a regular season record of 500 or better will advance to playoffs. Note that any team not given the opportunity to play 50% or more of the regular scheduled games, example, games canceled due to rain, not including defaults or forfeits, will be placed in the playoffs. Playoff bracketing procedures. The week following the end of regular season, a blank bracket will be posted. Teams will be ranked by their winning percentage, with the tiebreaker being accumulated sportsmanship points. Further ties will be broken randomly by the system. Starting at a time designated by the league coordinator, teams will select their position in the bracket based on seed. Note, it is better to pick your playoff path based on availability rather than competition. If a qualifying team misses their designated draft time, 
they can jump into the order where it stands and select at that time. If a team fails to choose their playoff spot, the league coordinator reserves the right to choose that team's spot in the playoffs. Reschedule policy. Regular season games will not be rescheduled. Playoff games will only be rescheduled due to conflict with other intramural sports activities and academic conflicts, class, lab, and exams that result in a team not having the minimum number required to start the game. Teams wishing to reschedule a playoff game must email the competitive sports office by 12 p.m. the business day prior to the game if possible. Note that proof of conflicts must be attached to the email. Ejections. The competitive sports staff reserves the right to eject any individual team or spectator who interrupts the flow of a game in any manner. Players may be ejected before, during, and after any contest and by any rec sports staff member. Reinstatement. To regain eligibility, the ejected person must complete each of the following. Prepare a written statement detailing the events surrounding the incident. Include an outline of the events surrounding ejection, actions that led to the ejection, assurance that the behavior will not occur again, suggestion for appropriate disciplinary action, and how the behavior will be avoided in the future. The statement should be sent to the coordinator of competitive sports. And schedule an appointment to meet with a coordinator of competitive sports. Please check out the Intramural Sports Handbook for further information. Protests. If a team feels an intramural sports staff member has enforced a rule or policy incorrectly, they must call a timeout immediately following the ruling in question. The intramural sports supervisor will then make a decision regarding the correct ruling and how to proceed. If the intramural sports supervisor is unable to make a decision, the game will be played under protest and the intramural sports professional staff will make a decision the following business day. Only rule interpretation and player eligibility can be protested. The judgment of an official may not be protested. Sport rules. Shoes must be worn. No sandals, boots, or bare feet are permitted out at the intramural fields. Gloves or, or mitts must be worn by all defensive players while out in the field. Players are to bring their own practice balls and gloves to the game. Softball bats and game balls will be provided. Teams that bring their own bat must use ASA approved softball bats. Please visit the ASA Softball website for certified equipment for more details. Batting order. At least seven players must occupy the first seven spots in the batting order. Anyone arriving late will fill in the 8th, ninth, and 10th spots accordingly. Empty spots in the batting order will result in outs. A courtesy runner may take the place of any base runner injured during play with the understanding that both players are eligible for further participation in the game. Any eligible sub shall be used as a courtesy runner. If no eligible subs are available, the player who made the last out shall be the courtesy runner. If the last out is on base, up to bat, or next to bat, the previous available out should be used. Teams are allowed to bat 10 or 11 with an extra player. 12 with two extra players in Korek, one male and one female, in the batting order. The female male batting rotation must be maintained in Korek. If a men's team has 11 players, all 11. Team captains must notify the umpire immediately of a substitution in the batting order. Players can substitute freely from the field and the bench, but when they are substituting into the batting lineup, they must notify the umpire immediately. All players may withdraw and re-enter a game once, but they must occupy the same batting position in the lineup when they do so. The opposing team handles improper re-entry with a protest. An improper re-entry becomes a violation after a pitch is made. There can never be more than 10 players out in the field at any one time. And all players must stand or sit behind the chain link backstop unless they are playing a defensive position, batting, or running the bases.
If after three innings either team is ahead by 20 runs, if after four innings either team is ahead by 15, or if after five either team is ahead by 10 runs, the game will be deemed official and be terminated. If the home team goes ahead by the mercy rule in the bottom half of an inning leading up to the mercy rule, the game will be terminated at that point. Unfinished games. In case the game is terminated due to darkness, weather conditions, or any unusual situations, the score shall revert back to the end of the last completed inning. The game will be considered complete if it reaches five complete innings, or if the game is called and the score difference is greater than 15 runs. No new innings of play will begin after the 50-minute mark. A game is complete after the completion of the inning, after the 50-minute mark, or At the highest point of the pitch, the arc shall be between 6 and 12 feet. If a quick pitch is thrown, the umpire shall call illegal pitch. Please make sure that the batter is ready. The pitcher has 20 seconds to release the next pitch. If an illegal pitch is thrown, the umpire shall call illegal pitch. The batter has the option to take the pitch, which is an automatic ball, or swing, in which case it becomes a legal pitch and the ball is live if hit. The pitcher must keep the pivot foot in contact with the pitcher's plate until the pitched ball leaves. A called strike is a legal pitch when it strikes home plate, which includes the black perimeter and or the carpet placed immediately in back of the plate. Any pitch not striking the plate or carpet and not swung at will be ruled a ball. If a batter steps with one or both feet entirely out of the batter's box, they shall be called out. If the batter steps on or over the plate or mat, they will also be called out. Players will start with a one strike, one ball count. Four balls will constitute a walk. A strikeout will consist of any combination of three strikes. A foul ball is considered a strike. With there will be a line drawn one third of the way from home plate and third base. If the runner crosses this line, they must go home and it will be considered a force out. When possible, the catcher has the plate and the runner should use the mat to avoid collisions. Leadoff, stealing, bunting, or chopping down on the ball are not permitted. Sliding is permitted. Those players that do, know, that do not know how to slide properly are cautioned not to slide. First base. It has a double safety base that will be used. Generally, the fielder will have the base in fair territory and the runner will have the base in foul territory. Territory. We will use the ASA double first base rule with the exception of an appeal for an out if the runner touches the base in fair territory. The pitching mat behind the plate is considered to be an extension of the plate for home plate. This concludes the Intermo Sports Softball Tournament Captain's Meeting. The Captain's Quiz found on IM Leagues must be completed with a score of 80% before a team can be created. Feel free to contact the IM Webmaster at imsports at recsports.wist.edu with your questions or concerns. Best of luck this up. Thank you and good luck this year.